Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Chipotle Mexican Grill Inc, ticker symbol CMG. We're looking at Chipotle as a subscriber request. Currently, Chipotle is trading for $1,584.02 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is down 11.5%. Their five-year returns, however, are a completely different story. Chipotle has compounded at a rate of 40% annually over this time. Going back 10 years, Chipotle has compounded at a rate of 20% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, since Chipotle was publicly listed, their stock price has compounded at a rate of 23.5% annually. Absolutely phenomenal returns over the past two decades or so. so Chipotle is currently trading in between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. There's a little bit of short interest around the business with just under 4% of their shares outstanding currently sold short. And Chipotle has a pretty big market cap. They're a $43 billion company. For background about the business, Chipotle Mexican Grill is the largest fast casual chain restaurant in the United States with system-wide sales of $7.5 billion in 2021. The Mexican concept is entirely company-owned with a footprint of more than 3,000 stores, heavily indexed to the United States, though the firm maintains a small presence in Canada, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany. Chipotle sells burritos, burrito bowls, tacos, quesadillas, and beverages, with a selling proposition built around competitive prices, high quality food sourcing, speed of service, and convenience. The company generates its revenues entirely from restaurant sales and delivery fees. Chipotle was founded in 1993 and is headquartered in Newport Beach, California. An interesting fact about Chipotle is that it was founded by a chef who originally started selling burritos because he wanted to find a way to make money so that he could open up a different type of restaurant for himself. So Chipotle was his brainchild in doing that. And needless to say, things have gone pretty well for him. Also worth noting, although they don't hold it anymore, McDonald's at one point owned a stake in Chipotle. So some of the systematization of the restaurant was a result of the operational prowess that McDonald's was able to contribute to Chipotle. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Chipotle based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public it's going to continue to improve and get better over time. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So the reasons for this are that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured by return on capital, and because the average publicly listed business only earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for 14% on average here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business. Chipotle earned very high returns on capital in 2017 and 2018. They had a very scary salmonella scare with their business in 2019 that caused them to really double down on food safety. Then their returns on capital did get hit quite a bit by the pandemic. As a quick service restaurant, the majority of their locations do not have drive throughs so they were reliant on pickup orders. However, since the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns ended, Chipotle's return on capital has rebounded quite nicely. Last year, they earned 14% returns on capital. And over the last 12 months, they've actually earned about 15.5% returns on capital. So even though they've had their ups and downs over this time, it looks like Chipotle is bouncing back strongly from the pandemic, at least in terms of their returns. And over the last five years, Chipotle is averaging 15% returns on capital. So just slightly above the mark we were looking for. But this is going to be our first check to start off on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. So this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. Chipotle has grown their revenues over this time. Currently, their revenues are almost double from where they were at in fiscal 2017. They've also managed to increase their earnings, almost tripling their earnings over this time. And likewise, they fared pretty well with their cash flows they've been almost able to triple their free cash flows as well. So all three of these are up, very strong growth from Chipotle. This is a check here on metric number three. Even though the business's returns on capital were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, it would be very difficult to tell that that was the case looking at their revenues, earnings, and free cash flow numbers for 2020 here. So Chipotle is seemingly a very strong growing business. 
Next up for metric number three, here we're taking a look at the business from the perspective of an individual shareholder in the company. We want their earnings per share to have grown over the last five years. So from fiscal 2017 to fiscal 2021, Chipotle has almost quadrupled their earnings per share. They're up more than triple over this time. This is another solid check here on metric number three. Also, a very nice thing to point out is that during this period, Chipotle has kept their shares outstanding approximately flat. So they have not been diluting shareholders and they have not been buying back shares, which is likely good for shareholders over the long term because it seems like Chipotle certainly had some high valuations, especially in 2021. So another check here on metric number three. And so far, we are perfect through our first three metrics. Metric number four is very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, their free cash flows per share have almost tripled. This is just in line with what their free cash flows have done over this time because their shares outstanding are basically flat. Another check here on metric number four, also worth pointing out is that over extended periods of time, meaning 10 plus years of data here, we'd ideally wanna see a company's earnings and cash flows be roughly the same. And although this is a smaller time period to look at, it does look like that seems to be the case here for Chipotle. Likely a good sign when it comes to the accounting of the business. Again, we're perfect through our first four metrics. Next up for metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that Chipotle has produced over the last five years. So this will help us evaluate how the business is utilizing leverage. Prior to 2019, Chipotle actually had negative net debt, meaning that after subtracting all of their liabilities, they were left over with cash. They added on quite a bit in 2019, which that could be something that you could check out by reading through their historical 10Ks. They ended 2021 with $2.5 billion in net debt, and currently they have $2.9 billion of net debt. So over this time, when we add up all of their free cash flows, Chipotle has produced $2.1 billion of free cash flow. Unfortunately, that's about $800 million off from where their net debt is currently. <clears throat> so this is going to be an X on metric number five, as the business looks like it's using just a little bit more leverage than we're necessarily comfortable with. By no means am I an expert on Chipotle, but there are some considerations here that you'd want to take into account. One, it's unclear how Chipotle's potential lease obligations or mortgages would be accounted for in their net debt here. So that's something you would want to dig in and learn more about. Secondly, given some of the qualitative aspects of the company, especially as a restaurant business and one that's and one that has all company owned stores, it's likely the case that even though this is slightly above where we want this to be for our metric, that Chipotle would be in a pretty reasonable position in terms of their leverage, especially given the fact that they produced a lot of free cash flow relative to where they had been at historically last year, and they've continued that same level of free cash flows over their last 12 months. So although this is our first X on metric number five, it's likely not as bad as it would seem to look. Then for our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury and give us a potential reason to be interested in the company. We learned that over the last five years, Chipotle has produced $2.1 billion in free cash flow which means that in an average year, they're producing $420 million of free cash flow. Currently, Chipotle has a $46 billion total enterprise value. We're using their total enterprise value here rather than their market cap because it's going to include both their market cap and their net debt position and give us a picture of the business that's more accurate to economic reality, more similar to as if Chipotle was a private business. So to get an average free cash flow at enterprise value yield, when we divide their $420 million of average free cash flows, by their $46 billion total enterprise value, that is only gonna give us a yield of about 1%. So that's about three percentage points under where the 10-year treasury is currently at and well below that 5% mark we're looking for. So this is gonna be another X on metric number six. Worth pointing out as well is that over their last 12 months, Spoli has earned about $862 million of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow yield, when we divide their $862 million of their last 12 months of free cash flows by their $46 billion total enterprise value, that again only gives us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of just about 2%. So on both an average and a current basis, it looks like Chipotle's free cash flow yield relative to their enterprise value would not be offering the risk premium we ideally would be looking for here. Then finally, here we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Chipotle. So starting with their current free cash flows of nearly $30 per share, 
and then assuming a growth stage for the business based off their historical abilities to grow their free cash flow since they became a public business. Historically, they've grown them at a rate of just under 11% annually. So using a growth rate over the next 10 years that mirrors that, and then using a terminal stage over the next 10 years after that, where their growth rate cuts in half, if we add in their tangible book value today and we wanted a 10% rate of return going forward from Chipotle, it looks like a fair value for the business would be less than half of what their stock price is currently at, that that fair value would come in at around $650 per share. Now keep in mind that this model is using historical growth assumptions as inputs, so you need to do the work to determine for yourself whether or not these should truly be applicable here. Personally, given the strength of the qualitative aspects of the company, it would seem like this model would not be giving the business its fair due, but it's ultimately up to you to do your own homework here to learn more about the company, to determine for yourself what appropriate assumptions to use are to project a baseline estimate going forward for Chipotle into the future. So keep in mind that this is not financial advice, this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. So in summary, Chipotle checks the box on four out of six of our metrics. They're earning about 15% returns on capital on average. Over the last five years, even with COVID-19 impacting the business, their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows have grown by quite a bit. They've experienced very strong growth in their business. All the while, they've kept their shares outstanding flat. So their per share metrics are up at a rate that's very high, which coupled with their above average returns on capital is very good for creating wealth for shareholders going forward. Then it looks like Chipotle is employing more debt in their business than we're necessarily comfortable with. But again, you'd want to understand how their restaurants are structured in terms of lease obligations or mortgages and how any of that debt is structured to get a better sense there. Based on their abilities to produce free cash flows both over the last five years and currently, it looks like the company does not offer us a risk premium when looking at their total enterprise value and that the quality of the business would seemingly be appreciated by the market right now in their price. And that was more or less the same case in what we discovered by performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Chipotle based on the business's historical abilities to grow their free cash flows and projecting those historical growth assumptions out to give us a potential baseline for the company going forward. Using that model, which again may not be giving Chipotle its fair due, the company's share price would have to decline by quite a bit in order to see a 10% rate of return going forward. Last time Chipotle was near that mark was during its COVID-19 pandemic lows in March of 2020. Well, personally, that does seem low. These things do happen. If you think that's realistic, you just have to be patient. It would really pay to learn more and do your own homework about Chipotle here. Esteemed value investor Monish Pabrai has Chipotle as part of his free lunch portfolio, which he updates annually, and it would seemingly fit into the category of being a wonderful business. Yeah. This type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. This analysis instead serves as a holistic and beginning understanding of Chipotle to help you determine if it's worth your time and your energy to dig in and learn more about Chipotle going forward. So if you're interested in learning more about the company, I would highly recommend diving into the company's filings. You can start by reading through their 10Ks to get a history of the business and their operating results. Management will also lay out some of the potential risks that the company faces, and you'll get a better sense of both management strategy going forward for the business and the environment that the company operates in. By doing this research, you'll come to a deeper understanding of both the character and competence of management, especially how they're approaching capital allocation as it pertains to Chipotle's continued growth into the future, and you'll have a deeper appreciation for both the qualitative and quantitative aspects of Chipotle's business. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct your research as if you're going to own 100% of the company, and you can truly understand the underlying essence of the business and understand what's important and what's not for the business going forward. Ultimately, that's going to be the way that you'll come to apply your own appropriate intrinsic value for the business. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Chipotle Mexican Grill Inc, ticker symbol CMG. As mentioned, Chipotle was a subscriber request, so I'm happy to make an analysis of it. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Chipotle with me, and have a great day.